Hello, in this video, let's talk a little bit about stick diagrams and layouts. So as you've seen in the process flow video, a CMOS process has a lot of lithography layers and the layouts would require you to understand the design rules between these various litho layers. And so what is layout? Layout essentially means putting together all these shapes that are required to fabricate a gate or a transistor. A design rule checker or a DRC is normally used to confirm if the layout is fine and does not have any violations. So before you begin the layout, it's a good idea to start with what are known as stick diagrams, which are nothing but a shorthand version of a layout and gives you an idea about the size of the gate, for example, or how you'd like to lay out certain features in the gate. And we normally use very basic layers in stick diagrams to ensure that we get the most compact or a regular design. So let's look at the stick diagram of an inverter. So again, to keep it simple, we'll use only the following layers. A poly, an N-diff, which is used to create NMOS, a P-diff, which is used to create PMOS, and metal and contact. So an NMOS in a stick diagram basically consists of an N-diff intersecting with a poly. So when I intersect an N-diff with a poly, I get an N-MOS. Similarly, when I intersect a poly with a P-diff, I get a P-MOS. And so if you look at an inverter, an inverter essentially consists of a P-MOS and an N-MOS with the drain shorted. The source of the P-MOS is connected to VDD, drain is connected to ground, and the gates are shorted to create the input. So the stick diagram of this inverter would essentially look like by first, let's draw the PMOS and the NMOS. So this is your PDIF, which forms the PMOS, the NDIF, which forms the NMOS. The poly is shared between the two transistors, indicating that you have this connection. So now you created the PMOS here, the NMOS here. All now that is left is creating the contacts and the metals. So we run one line, which is the VDD line and the ground line, right? And what we do is we will connect the PMOS in such a way that one, the source of the PMOS is shorted to VDD, the drain of the PMOS is shorted to the drain of the NMOS and is connected to the output terminal. The NMOS on the other hand, the source of the NMOS is connected to ground. Right? And then we create an input, the input is shorted to the poly. So this is the stick diagram of the inverter in this very basic technology. In such cases, normally we assume, so you know that the hole mobility is going to be less than the electron mobility. So the holes tend to, the PMOS tends to be wider than the NMOS. Sometimes it helps us to draw this PDIF to actually be larger than the NDIF. But in this video, I'll not be using that convention. So now let's try and draw the stick diagrams for the two input NAND and the NOR. So this is your two input NAND, which consists of an NMOS stack and a PMOS connected in parallel. So the stick diagram again would be always start with the poly. So because we have shared we have shared inputs for one PMOS, one NMOS and one PMOS, one NMOS, this would be your A, this would be your B, for example. And then you create the, so for the NMOS, you just have one NDIF which is crossing both the polys, right? So here I'm not explicitly calling out this node, but because this essentially looks like two transistors connected in series. For the PMOS, what we do is we take the common node and connect it to VTD and the other two nodes are shorted and connected to the drain of this NMOS, creating the stick diagram for the NAND gate. The NOR gate is going to look like a flip of this because the NOR gate has a PMOS stack and NMOS connected in parallel. And so essentially it looks like the continuous PDIF here shared between the two polylines and the NDIF with a common node connected to ground and the two drains shorted and connected to the drain of the PMOS transistor. So you see when we draw stick diagrams, when you have stacks, it becomes very easy because you essentially have a straight line indicating a series connection between two transistors. Now a couple of rules or things that pop out of the stick diagram is that complementary transistor pairs typically share the polyline. Other thing to keep in mind is generally in old technologies, what would happen is, if you look at these three contacts, right? When you had 
a contact between two polylines, that would mean that the polylines would have to be separated more. That is the contact. By adding a contact between two polylines, you had to intentionally separate the polylines more. If there was no contact between the polylines, you could keep the polylines closer. In olden technologies, it was important to reduce the number of contacts if we could, so as to ensure that our designs were more compact. And then the other thing to keep in mind is, when you connect lines in parallel, right, it leads to larger layouts. And so therefore, you want to have more stacks if you can in a stick diagram. Now, obviously, all that is not possible for the NAND or NOR, but when you design custom layouts, you try to use these rules to design the stick diagram. Now let's assume we want to design a complex gate. For example, I'm taking this particular example where Y is given by BC plus AD plus AE, the whole complement. Again, remember when you want to design CMOS, it's nice to think of the expression that you want to design as, as some expression complement because then I can quickly design the pull down stack and the pull up stack. So for the pull down stack, let's use a different convention. So here, what I'm going to use is instead of drawing it as transistors, I'm going to draw it using graphs. So I'll connect, so Y is my output node. I'll use a line to connect to another node and this line indicates a transistor. If you look at the stack, I have BC and then I have A, which is common between AD and AE. So I can think of one stack between Y and ground as a B, followed by a C. So this is your BC connected in series. I then have A which I'm keeping common and then I have D and E connected in parallel, right? So I have a path AD, I have a path AE, and then I have a path BC. All these three paths when true will pull Y to ground. Now to construct the dual or the pull up network, again, we borrow from graph theory. One way to do it would be we we see here, if you look at this network, we see that there are two confined areas, if you will. So you have one confined area here, one confined area here. We can think of one area here and one area here. So we create a vertex in each of the confined areas. And then we connect the neighboring vertices, ensuring that each edge of the pull down is intersected only once. So when you do that, what you get is something of this. So I have again a VDD and an output node Y here. Now because there is one open here, there is one closed area here and a closed area here, I'll create these two vertices here. And then I'll draw lines which intersect the pull down lines on the one. So I have one line here, which is the A, another one from this vertex to the other vertex, which is a B and so on and so forth. So if I now think about the gate, this is my pull down network. And so the pull down network, if I, if I were to draw that in a transistor fashion, it would be A with D and E in parallel and the BC with the output node here. The pull up network is basically what's shown in Y. And so if I'm going to look at that, I basically have A with D and E in parallel and then B and C connected in parallel again. So this shows the pull-up network. So by creating this dual, I've essentially created the pull-up network here. Again, like in all CMOS designs, when NMOSs are in parallel, they end up being in series in the PMOS. And when NMOSs are in series, they end up being parallel in the PMOS case, right? So this is your static CMOS gate to implement the function BC plus AD plus AE, the whole complement. Now, if I start and draw a stick diagram for this gate, I create a lot of problems. So first thing is, so this is the stick diagram I've drawn where I've again used five polylines because I have five inputs A, B, C, D, E. What I see is a few problems in this stick diagram. In a stick diagram, you want to have as many shared diffusions as possible, right? And you don't want to have contact at diffusion if you can. What you see is that if I want to create a stick diagram using this A, B, C, D, E, I end up creating a discontinuity in the diffusion here. So I have a PDF line here and a PDF line here with no connection between these two. Now again, in normal layouts, this would mean that the spacing between these two polylines has to become wider. So which means the gate becomes looser. So we don't like these breaks in diffusion if we can help it. 
The other thing that you see here, I've intentionally drawn this in a dark blue color here because this is light blue is the color of metal one. So now if I want to contact this node to this node, I can't run a metal line through this because that metal line is going to short this line and this line. So the only way I can run a contact between these two nodes is by using the higher metal. And so then these two do not talk to each other. Again, that means that you're essentially employing more layers than required in the design. So question is, is there a better way to do this? And so here again, we'll draw upon graph theory and talk about Euler paths. So what's an Euler path? An Euler path is an interrupted path that travels each edge of the graph only once. So what we want to do is we want to find a common path in both the PMOS and the NMOS networks. And we look at this because what's going to happen is if you use this technique, we're going to see that we can create a much compact stick diagram for this gate. So let's look at the pull down network and the pull up network. And let's try and identify a Euler path. So what is an Euler path? Basically, I need to traverse every edge of this network only once and still connect all the vertices of the graph. And if I have a path which is similar between the PMOS and NMOS, then that would be the optimal way I'd use to design the stick diagram. So let's look at a specific path. Suppose I use this path, which is A, E. So I start with E, D, A, B, C. So I do E, D, A, B, C. And if I use the same path E, D, A, B, C, I connect all the vertices and it is the common Euler path between these two networks. So what I'll now do is I'll arrange the poly using this Euler path, right? So instead of using A, B, C, D, E, suppose I arrange the poly lines in the fashion E, D, A, B, C. What I see now is I have maximized the shared diffusions and I have maximized the sharing of contacts. So what happens in this case is without any breaks and diffusion and without employing any higher metal layers, I can create a stick diagram. So not all functions will lend themselves to Euler paths, but if an Euler path is common between the PMOS and NMOS, that will ensure that you'll get a compact stick diagram or a compact layout for your gate. Now, typically automatic place and route tools map out the entire design onto standard cells. So again, when we do an HDL, HDL converts it to gates and then these gates are then laid out using standard cells. So when you're creating standard cells or when you're creating gates, which are eventually going to be replicated all over the design, you need to maintain a certain uniformity. So generally you'll see that when you create standard cells, they will have a say constant cell height, for example, but will allow with variable widths. That way you can stack them next to each other. So again, if you think about the cell now, you know stick diagram. So you want to create a PMOS diffusion, you want to create an NMOS diffusion. You have these buses, which are the VDD and the ground bus. And then you have a space left in between for doing any wiring. So either the internal wiring of the gate, or if you want to bring inputs from the previous standard cell into this. So by doing this and by predetermining what the regions of the standard cell are, tiling of these cells during automatic place and route becomes easier because then the bus can be continuous across VDD and ground. Similarly, wells can be continuous. And so this provides you with a lot of regularity in your design. Generally, poly runs vertical and metal lines and old technologies tend to be bi-directional. So the example I used in this video, the metal could be bi-directional. In today's technologies, metals are almost always unidirectional. So typically we don't restrict ourselves to metal one, we go up to metal two or metal three when we're building standard cells. And cells, as we mentioned, because they are the same height, we usually tile them in rows. And again, in older designs, there used to be some space left behind at, between adjacent rows so that metal lines could be routed through those. Again, today with the higher number of metals that we have, Sometimes we just pull the routing up to higher metal layers and then abut these two rows also together. That way we end up creating a compact design or we end up saving area on silicon. Now, <clears throat> this 
you'd ask that this design, if it's everything is automatically generated, what is it there for an engineer? So synthesized design usually tends to be slower than a good custom design. And hence, a lot of work is normally done to get a good custom design. But it requires a lot of work to ensure that your design can give you the advantage that you specifically are looking. Now, stick diagrams can also be used for area estimation. Again, this is a quick and dirty method to, to estimate what is the area of a cell. And these go by what are known as wiring tracks. That is, we design the standard cell and we budget a certain amount of space required for a wire to run through. And then by counting the number of wire tracks we have, we put an estimate on the cell size. So typically, I'll take an example where metal layers of some kind limit the area at both X and Y. So if that is the case, let's uh, assume, and again, this is simply something to illustrate the point. Let's assume that the line and space of a metal in some particular technology is half a micron in both directions. And it is this metal that is determining the standard cell size. So if I look at a NAND2 cell, a NAND2 cell has essentially two metal lines in its height. And so if I look at the height, it's two metal tracks, which is which you need to budget for. So it's roughly two and a half microns because line and space is half a micron for the metal. Similarly, if you look at the width, it's again two metal tracks. And so the width is also going to be 2.5 microns. So this is roughly an estimate of what the size of the NAND2 cell would be in this technology. So to conclude, layout of gates require a lot of effort, especially if you want to achieve compact area. The process is automated, but custom design is preferred, especially because it provides a competitive advantage to the company. Now, stick diagrams are a very quick method to brainstorm layout, especially of customized cells, and to get a very quick estimate of the area of these cells.